million mile journey into orbit around the moon and back to Earth. The historic six day, three hour mission of Apollo 8 demonstrated the performance of many activities required for the success of future manned flights, including landing men on the moon and returning them safely to Earth. The performance of the Apollo Saturn V, America's most powerful space vehicle, was again demonstrated on this mission. The three-stage Saturn V launch vehicle had been qualified for the Apollo 8 flight, its first manned mission by two successful unmanned launches. The flight worthiness of the command and service modules of the Apollo spacecraft had been proven on previous missions, including the 11-day manned Earth orbital mission of the Apollo 7. The ability of man to function normally to perform specific activities and to navigate the Apollo spacecraft on a distant flight were demonstrated by the three-man crew of Apollo 8. Frank Borman, a veteran of the Gemini program, was command pilot for the mission. James A. Lovell, who had participated in two Gemini flights, was command module pilot. And William A. Anders was lunar module pilot. NASA and crew confidence in the Apollo 8 mission was very high. Although difficult, it was one of the least complicated of possible lunar missions and was well within the design capabilities of the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle. The mission also contained several commit points, at which times mission control and the astronaut crew had options to proceed with the planned mission or, if necessary, switch to an alternate mission plan. In demonstrating the performance of the crew, the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle and the mission support facilities on a manned lunar mission, Apollo 8 accomplished the first of its primary mission objectives. The second primary objective was concerned with planned activities performed during the mission, including translunar injection, command service module navigation, communications and mid-course corrections. An assessment of fuel and other items consumed on the mission and passive thermal control, that is, external temperature control of the command service modules in deep space. The 28-hour final countdown for Apollo 8 was begun on the night of December 19th by the manned launch operations team at Kennedy Space Center. The launch date for Apollo 8 set in November, was maintained throughout the rigorous checkout and countdown of the complex Apollo Saturn V space vehicle. In the early morning hours of December 21st, the three-man crew of Apollo 8 boarded the NASA transfer van and began their journey to the launch pad at Complex 39. They arrived at the base of the pad about three hours before liftoff. Elevators carried the crew to the 320-foot level of the launch tower, from where they crossed the Apollo access arm and entered the White Room. With monitors in the launch control center indicating all spacecraft and launch vehicle systems functioning normally, the astronauts entered the spacecraft. The countdown proceeded smoothly with no unscheduled holds. About four minutes before liftoff, the last manual check of all launch consoles was completed. At T minus three minutes and seven seconds, an automatic sequencer took over the countdown. As the clock reached T minus eight and nine tenths seconds, the engines of the first stage were ignited.
million-pound Apollo Saturn space vehicle slowly rose from its launch pad and then climbed into space at an accelerating speed. Liftoff of Apollo 8 was recorded at 7.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, precisely on schedule. The launch azimuth was exactly 72 degrees. altitude of 36 miles, the center engine of the first stage Apollo shut down. Houston, 28 day, seconds Houston. later, the four outside engines shut down, and separation of the stages took place. All right, here. Understand, sir. The one million pound thrust of the second stage raised the speed and altitude of Apollo 8 to 6,800 miles per hour, 106 miles above Earth. At 8 minutes 44 seconds into the flight, Mission Control in Houston, Texas confirmed second stage shutdown and separation. The third stage was then ignited for the first time to place itself and the Apollo spacecraft a 283,000 pound payload into a planned 119 mile high Earth parking orbit. During two revolutions of the Earth, the crew checked spacecraft and launch vehicle systems in preparation for reignition of the third stage and insertion into a lunar trajectory. A similar check was conducted at mission control. This was the first commit point in the flight. After careful evaluation of all systems in the space vehicle and of all ground tracking stations, Mission Control gave the go-ahead for translunar insertion. Apollo 8, Houston, you're looking good here, right down the center line. Roger, Apollo 8. Apollo 8, coming up on 20 seconds to ignition. Mark it, and you're looking very good. Roger. The third stage engine was reignited at 2 hours, 50 minutes, and 36 seconds into the flight. The engine burned for 5 minutes and 19 seconds, raising Apollo 8's speed to a velocity of 24,200 miles per hour, thrusting Apollo from Earth orbit toward the moon. For the first time, man had left his home planet to begin a translunar flight through space. The third stage had performed its function perfectly. And 20 minutes after translunar insertion, spacecraft separation occurred. Following a short period of station keeping, the spacecraft moved away in preparation for third stage fuel dump. The remaining liquid oxygen in the third stage was then released, which increased the velocity of the stage on a new trajectory. This eliminated the possibility of recontact with the spacecraft by placing the stage in a trajectory passing behind the moon and into solar orbit. At 6 hours and 33 minutes into the flight, the astronauts tested the S-band high-gain steerable antenna. Flown for the first time, this small 70-inch wide antenna was used for most of the two-way transmissions between the spacecraft and mission control. The small antenna performed better than predicted. In contrast,